Hello everyone and welcome back to the last section of decision making. So I released um, a decision making mock um, in my last video um, and so this is the very last video I have to do um, just finishing off uh, decision making essentially. Obviously I will release some more follow up videos um, just on each of the sections, just answering some more of the questions, talking through some more of them but please let me know what else you would like to see um, in regards to content. Obviously I have more QR um, and then VR and SJT content coming up as well. But importantly, it's really, really useful for me if I can get feedback from you guys um, uh, as, as to what you're looking for exactly. OK, so important, a couple of important ideas of prob probabilistic and statistical reasoning or probability, as everyone calls it. So the first thing is that the questions that come up repeat very, very much. OK, so there's probably maybe like 10 to 12 different styles of questions, I would say, just, well, you know, it's just a rough number off the top of my head. But they repeat and they come up so many, so many times that if you do enough practice of, of, with this, you'll know exactly how to answer each question as soon as you kind of see it. There's one style which I would say comes up way more than the others, which is the um, judging based only on, and then it gives you two variables, is x better than y, for example. And I'll tell you how I would do that one exactly. But other than that, um, I would say all the other variables come up fairly, all the other questions come up fairly equally. And so therefore, it's just about trying to get through as many of them as possible and getting to that stage where we said it's just about pattern recognition, just about as soon as you see it, you know exactly what to do. OK, so some of the key ideas with the probability. Um, so first of all, the probability of um, something happening plus the probability of something not happening is one. OK, so the probability of something happening plus the probability of it not happening is one, okay? Um, and then in terms of probability of multiple events, so the probability of A and B happening, okay, and if those are two individual events, that's the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, okay? So just some basic ideas. Like, the probability questions really aren't too difficult at all. It's just about kind of understanding the different styles that comes up. That's all it really, really is, okay? So um, in terms of how to go about doing it, so the way that I would always say to do it is work out the individual probability, okay? So always look at the question, try and work out the probability, and then ask yourself the question, and you'll often be able to find the answer. It'll make more sense in the examples and the walkthroughs that I'm about to show you um, today, okay? So in terms of kind of the techniques that are used, I would say probability trees, okay? Um, so it's important to be able to understand how they work um, and perhaps not in this video, but in one of the later videos, I will do a question on probability trees. And if you guys would like to see that, please do comment down below and um, just remind me. Tables, so I'll explain what I mean by tables. Um, I'll show you like the table method that I use in order to work out those um, judging based only on X or Y questions. And then finally, the different methods as well. It's important to understand, okay, so how do I do this question? How do I do this question? And that's why I, I decided to take you through some ex extra examples in this video as well. Okay, so without further ado, then I think we should just get straight into it. So this is the style of question that I meet when it says considering only the likelihood of all or judging based only on. And then it gives you some variables and it gives you a question. So what I like to do is if you make a table and you need to put exactly as it says here. So the coach's team scoring a goal and the opponent team not scoring. Then you have the two things to consider, which is player A and player B. OK, so it tells us, um, so if you think about it, obviously we want the coach's team to score and we also want the opponent team not to score. So we want both of these values to be as high as possible. That's not necessarily always the case. It might be sometimes you want one to be as high and the other one, you want the other one to be as low. So, for example, if it was, um, you've probably seen this kind of question where it gives you, oh, there's a, there's a disease, there's two treatments for it. This produces this cure rate and it has this side effect rate. Obviously, you want the cure rate to be as high as possible, but you would want the side effect to be as low as possible. OK, so let's start reading. So a football coach plans to replace a player of his team in the second half of a match. If player A is replaced, there's an 80% chance of the coach's team scoring. So I always like to use decimals and a 70% chance of the opponent team scoring. So that's a 30% chance of the opponent team not scoring. If player B is replaced, there'll be a 20% chance of the coach's team not scoring. So that's an 80% chance of the coach's team scoring and a 50% chance of the opponent team not scoring. So we can see coach scoring is going to not be relevant here. OK, They're, that's not going to have an effect. So is player A the better replacement choice? Remember, we want the probability to be as, as high as possible. I would look at my diagram, my table, and I would say, no, I want player B. So I'd say no. So that rules out A and B. And then let's look at C and D. So D talk says there's a low chance of the coach's team scoring. We know that the answer has nothing to do with the coach's team scoring. So therefore, it has to be C and C makes sense. OK, 
So obviously you don't necessarily always have to do the table. I've kind of gotten to the point where sometimes I do the table. Um, you'll see my DM walkthrough that for some questions I did do the table, but you don't necessarily need to. If you're able to, when you read it, one of the kind of key tips I would say is look out for opposing numbers. You're not just looking for the numbers that are the same, but like 80 and 20, you know, that adds up to 100. So therefore it's likely that one of them is going to be on the other side, if that makes sense. So for example, if it said 80% is the coach team scoring, then the 20% is the coach team not scoring, that kind of idea. So don't just look for the exact same number, look for opposing numbers as well. Okay. And so, um, yeah. And another thing to talk about here as well, which is important, um, is that normally the an answer won't be contradictory. So what I mean by that, it, it's not like A is going to have greater coach scoring and B is going to have greater opponent team not scoring. Does that make sense? So it's not like A wins one and B wins one. It's either one variable, one person will win both. So they'll either have greater coach scoring and greater opponent scoring, or they'll win one and the other will be a draw. Do you see? So as soon as I put down opponent team not scoring is greater, I could have ruled out A and B. Because I, kn I knew that since B already has one point on the board, there's no way, like I said, it, it, these questions, it's not like one person wins one and the other person wins the other. There's only one winner. So, it, and it's very clear. It's normally that there's one draw and the other one is a clear win or there's two wins, if that makes sense. So for that reason, as soon as I saw these values, I kind of ruled out the fact that it can't be player A is a better replacement choice because you can see B has a greater team the chance of the opponent team not scoring. And then based off the other options, C is going to be the right one. OK, and um, so that's just a, a, a little kind of tip or trick, I guess, as such. OK, so let's move on to the next question. So considering only the likelihood of rain and the pool remaining closed for maintenance, should Harry buy the outdoor pool pass? So you've got if you read to the top, it says he can buy a summer season pass to an outdoor pool or an indoor pool. Um, the outdoor pool remains closed when it rains. Pass records indicate there's a 0 0.3 chance it will not rain. So the chance of rain is going to be 0 0.7. See, this is it doesn't tell you this explicitly, but the rain isn't going to affect the indoor pool. That's why it's not mentioned in the rest of the question. And here you can see, as I'm reading, it says the likelihood of the pool remaining closed for maintenance is 3 18 for the outdoor pool and 1 6 for the indoor pool. I can see those are both uh, equivalent fractions. So I'm not, I don't even need to fill that in because I know maintenance can't have an effect on my answer, if that makes sense. So therefore, I'm going to rule out D immediately. And therefore, I know the only thing I need to consider is the rain here. And remember, we don't want it to rain because we don't want it to close. And so therefore, I would say, should Harry buy the outdoor pool pass? Remember what I said, ask yourself the question. No, he should buy the indoor pool pass. So since it's no, the only answer that's possible is C. OK, so remember, always ask yourself the question um, when trying to answer them and eliminate our answers. OK, cool. So that's th this is what I believe to be the most common style of question. These are the ones that always comes up and you can do these really, really fast. And if you go back um, and if you guys are new to the channel here, if you go back, I just did a decision making walkthrough um, where I kind of went through a, a mock together. And you can see these are the questions that I really like to do because I think you can do them really, really fast. OK, cool. So let's have a look at this one. So the person who selects game one has a better chance of winning. So game one, roll both dice and you win if they both show even numbers. Roll both dice and you win if they both show odd numbers. So game one, even numbers is one, two, three, four. So remember, for both dice to show even numbers is the probability of each one multiplied together. So it's four, six, even on the first one, two, six on the second one. So that's eight out of 36. On game two, they both show odd numbers. Odd numbers is one, two, so two out of six. And then it's going to be four out of six because numbers are either odd or even. And you can see two of them are even here, so four must be odd here. So you can see equal chances. The person who selects game one has a better chance of winning. I'd say no. And you can see C is going to be the correct answer here. Okay, so remember, always do the probability, do the maths. Um, I think sometimes the difficulty that students have is to try just like that initial step of just starting to do the maths. OK, it can be quite challenging, quite daunting because you might not necessarily know where to go. But, you know, you can only work with the information that you have quite literally in front of you. So never forget that. And then just kind of like take it from there, essentially, if that makes sense. Cool. OK, so um, that's pretty much um, the kind of main idea with a lot of these. Remember, always ask yourself the statement. OK, so on to the last question. So Diana has a box containing six pairs of earrings that are identical in every way except colour. There are three red pairs and there are three blue pairs. Each pair contains two earrings of the same colour. Diana wants to draw a number of earrings at random such that she has at least one complete red pair and one complete blue pair. Should she draw eight earrings randomly? So the way to do this question is to consider the worst possible case scenario. So what I mean by that is, so if you've got these six pair of ear uh, these earrings, it could be that she draws out all of one colour pair. So she draws out all the blues or all the reds. And then that would leave her with just the other colour. And therefore, she just needs to draw two more. 
So let's say she draws out three blue pairs, that's six earrings, then she just have to draw out one red pair, which is just the final two earrings. So in total, that's eight earrings. So should she draw out eight earrings randomly in order to achieve this? Yes, I would say that's true. So it's not going to be C or D. So remember, we just try to calculate the probability or like try to calculate the working there. Let's have a look at A and B. B says she will have a 100% chance of picking three red pairs and one blue pair if she draws eight earrings. Well, not necessarily. It could go the other way. Okay, so it's not B and A is right because she can get more than one pair of each color. Yeah, she could end up with two and two or three pairs of one color and one pair of the other. Exactly. Okay, so A is the correct answer there. So um, that's just a very quick run through through some of the questions. I know there are probably more harder questions on probability as well, which I'm more than happy to go through. Um, and if you guys do have any questions that you would like me to specifically go through, always just, you know, just drop a message in the comments below um, and I can um, try and incorporate them into one of my videos. But I definitely will drop more probability questions um, in the foreseeable future. But I just wanted to give just a general idea of some, some of um, some of some ways to do these questions. But as always, thank you so much for the support um, and please do get in contact if you need any help. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next video.